I'm just about to have my coffee with baklava. I have three types of baklava here. So the first one, this is mine, pistachio baklava. This is by far the worst baklava I've ever had. It's just so sickening sweet. But this one, I'm saving this for hubby. Look at that nice sticky sugary stuff. That is such a nice, nice, nice sugar hit. Sugar makes me happy and my succulents makes me happy. So this area now I have sort of semi placed them here because I, I st I'm still not sure whether I'm going to change it. But my cotyledon unicorn plant has already experienced minus six. Well, probably in our area here, might not be minus six. Maybe it's only minus four. But at the airport is where they get their temperature readings here in Canberra. And that's like a few miles away from us. But anyway, I am talking and I can't think because I'm looking at these plants. Now, this is my... What do you belong to? <laughs> yes, it's mine. I think because it's in my garden. This is a bluebird. There you go. I have to try and get off that saying, my, 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 okay. Oh, my, my, my. But anyway, bluebird that I've already, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. These are all cutting. So my mother plant, I chopped the head off. And some of them are babies and some of them are mummies. But anyway, that's now planted in this pretty pot with my little beautiful concretion here. And I have repotted my variegated Ophila cotyledon. Some of the plants I haven't reported yet. These are my recent plant haul from FLO Plant Creation. And yep, Red Psyche, $30. Oh my goodness. Anyway, it's almost as expensive as my baklava. But this one, I've got a designated pot for it. But look at these beautiful pots. Anyway, I still have to... I'm playing around with this area. And what are you, Saragossa? Look at the tips on this one. So this one's, I think... Are you the one who had nearly died oh no no this is the uh special one i think this is pink saragossa and it's just beautiful look at the tips gorgeous gorgeous plant okay i don't wanna a lot of people like to do this with succulents don't do that because you're gonna break those little claws that they have and this one is also another saragossa caspidata something yes and gemula one of them is a gemula but anyway i can't i think this is the gemula and this one is a red absinthe not a cuspidata are you a cuspidata as well i don't know but it's just called red absinthe but it's flowering at the moment i had a baby on this one and i actually safely secured it so now all these plants are all out here, out in the open. Oh, gorgeous. Look at you. Beautiful now. Look at the Rylacina Sarahimi Bhutan. Now that one, my ever so slow growing Echeveria Christmas Eve. This has finally... Oh, okay. Oi. <laughs> Oi. I saw a baby, another baby. So, oh, another baby over there. So finally, only took... Two years. This one, glory. So many beautiful plants. Uh, are you the glory of love? Anyway, this one, see, I've got wire tied up to my candelabra. And now it's also sitting on the edge of that one to hold it up. So, and this one is being held by a wire on this other candle holder here. And so that's that one. That one, I drilled a hole onto my uh, here we go with the my again so to, uh, victor raider barigara this is the last one i've got left and this one is ariel or lynx snow do you look the same as i need to compare sometimes oh no double take on these plants now they are different but they look similar it's got that blue tone but anyway the reason why I'm here is because I want to show you my Ioniums. This is my Ionium section, which I love, 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 love the plant. 
but I just can't grow them here without being scarred. Or so this is Grenovia, Ionium, Mardi Gras, Fiesta, or Inferno, sorry. Inferno, my Fiesta is somewhere hidden. This is Smithy Eye, which is very, very dry. And lily pad. Lily pad suffered with the frost a little bit because we had uh, some cold nights. Tuesday, Wednesday, it is now Thursday. So for the next two weeks, happy days because we are not going to have frost. It's going to be the coldest is two degrees Celsius. And Ionium Aureum. Okay, look, I have to do it this way so you can see it's protected from above by the shelf and this is supposed to be a giant one this grows really really big and i can't even water them because if i do if we get cold nights they are going to freeze their butt off and they are going to die as i have experienced in the past because the area where i'm in they don't like the cold in here look at that so all those lines that you see on this granovia here show me your name okay another label uh, oh, Grenovia, just Grenovia, Victoria, 2000, oh, 2019 is when I bought this plant. Now I have to replace that label or else I wouldn't know. Now, I bought it with about a plant, only small, about that size there. Only, okay, my hand. So it's only about a bit smaller than that. But anyway, I paid $10 for it. And now look at all of that. The, um, a few months ago, that sort of looked dead. And... I haven't taken a photo, but it's in my past videos that it's sort of dry and it sort of almost look like this. <laughs> but this one, they need to be watered. Also, this is a lot of Grenovia. See, that's what happens with Ionium when they get cold. They sort of have that pitiful, miserable look about them and I don't like it. And now this one got hit by the frost. Look at that. So my ballerina is not dancing anymore but this one's now I'm still gonna leave it here I'm not gonna touch that but they do recover the variegated one is probably should be on the inside and then the normal one should be on the outside but never mind and this one is a Semper Vivum hybrid of Haworthy I cross Semper V and it's sort of semi frost hardy but it still suffer a little bit you can see that's the Ionium side of it up the top look at all of them is it not beautiful when they stress like that but I really need to water that but I can't now I can because we're not gonna have frost anymore so with Ionium growing them even this variegated Abbey Brook this one here is sort of protected hey birdie birdie you're so noisy I think they're nesting in there and the black rose Vachkov Ionium here facing the frost bravely because even though it's up the top it's on the edge so any frost will settle on that plant but it's alive because it can handle the frost and this one can't handle the frost a sedum or sedum burrito but look how beautiful this one has become now oh my goodness <gasps> don't drop it don't drop it okay and she drops it okay look I got my finger <laughs> my little pinky in the bottom just to support it that's looking beautiful to think i started with only one small plant like basically that one there a little bit bigger than that but anywho this ionium here sunburst is frost hardy i kept saying only to minus four if you put this out in the open and you get minus 4.5 that is going to die <laughs> but in here even at minus 11, it did suffer a little bit when we had minus 11 before. But since this is in an area wherein I have the wall of my house sort of protecting it. And in the suburbs where you have a lot of houses and also over there where the bamboos are, the bamboo actually help protect this area that I'm in. And also those plants, those trees, Pitosporum, they also protect my succulents that I'm growing in this area, coupled with 50% UV shade cloth that I've got there. In here, I have created like a microclimate for my succulents. That's why I am able to grow a lot of succulents that are not frost hardy and they are survived 
surviving in here. So Canberra, where I am in, we have an elevation of about 600 meters above sea level. But the lower your elevation, the warmer the area that you're going to be in. So say, for example, if you live in Sydney or Melbourne, here in Australia, you have a much warmer climate compared to us. And in places in Australia where in you are a thousand, say, for example, you're in the mountains where there's snow at the moment, you can't grow a lot of these succulents unless you grow them in a greenhouse. Now, speaking of greenhouses, if you have a greenhouse and you keep your succulents in there, and you live in an area, in an open area, say for example, like in a farm situation, then your greenhouse will act as an esky or a cooler box for the succulents. So say for example, if it's minus six, inside that will also be minus six. And that's why a lot of the plants will die from the cold. They will freeze their bottom off. So say for example, we have an oval uh, a few meters down the end of the road here where I live. And if I grow my succulents in there with no protection from houses like walls, like my wall here, the neighbor's wall and the other two-story house behind us, and the tall trees of the Pitosporum. If I haven't got them and I just have a greenhouse, what would happen is that if I have succulents growing in there, they are going to suffer from the cold more than my area here, which I have a 50% UV shade cloth area and protection from the fence and also all those structures. In here, I've got an Aeonium. I think this is Blushing Beauty. And I lost the label, but anyway, so this one is not covered up, so there's no overhead coverings. If we have clear nights, which means the stars are out, then the frost or the dew can settle on the plants. In this case, this Aeonium Blushing Beauty. Ionium Blushing Beauty is frost hardy up to minus four, but if frost settles on top of it, they are still going to suffer and look like this. But it's not going to die. It will survive. In this case, it's grown miniatured Ioniums. Look at that. That's not that cute. It's like bonsified. So even that one there that looks like it's crested, but maybe it's just a cluster. Most of my succulents that I have growing, say for example, this one here, this has been acclimated or have been acclimatized to my area. So these are cuttings from my big sunburst that you saw earlier. And these are now babies, but look at all this new growth and the color. Isn't that intense? Oh my goodness, it's just beautiful. And look at that variegated full yellow one. Isn't that beautiful? So this one has been used to this area so it can survive the cold that we have here. Even if we had a cold night the other night, I think it was generally, I don't really know how cold we got in here, but the re report is that we did get to minus 8.5 in some areas in Canberra. Now, maybe in the football field or something like that where it's open. But anyway, this one here as well, this is a crested version of that Ionium here. Now, or crested sunburst. Now, this one is also sort of growing small because it's trying to protect itself from the cold. And also one trick is I haven't watered most of my Ionium. The last time I watered this once was about two weeks ago. We had a little bit of rain, but it not enough to get them wet. So they're fairly dry and I'm trying to lift this up. Hang on. Yep. It's sort of halfway. 
the soil wetness. And this one is Ionium Medusa. My Medusa is not coloring up right now. I got this at the end of spring last year. So it's fairly new. Thank you, Lena Lee, again. This is Medusa and it was much more colorful when I got it, but I have been growing it in there. So this is protected shelf, okay? So it's been grown right there before and the last couple of weeks two weeks ago i took it out because i noticed that it's not uh it's losing its color so i thought i'll put it here but the other one this is moonburst okay this moonburst is a recent acquisition february is when i got it and i don't really wanna kill it <laughs> So I left it here, but then now it's touching the other pot, so which is not good. Oh, that's where my unguiculata went to. Anyway, so I need to take this out of here. And because I don't like it touching, they can bruise easily. And okay, don't, don't, don't. There you go. Oops, are you bruised now? Now, so sunburst and moonburst. So this one now, I will put it somewhere here, still protected. I am not going to put that out because it's newly acquired and my Big Bang, which is about a week older than that other one. I wasn't thinking properly and also this went all green and I put it out here, but I can see some slight, I, I wouldn't say it got damaged. It didn't get damaged at all by the frost, but it's looking lethargic. So it's like saying I need coffee to pick me up <laughs> so you can see that it's sort of down but since we're going to be having i think forecast rain tomorrow and hopefully it'll get wet enough to sort of save me watering it or soaking it orientation is very important where you grow your plants ionium especially will suffer from the frost if you have your greenhouse in an open area where there's no protections from buildings or trees or structures then you're best having a little bit of a heater to warm up your succulents and also paying attention to the weather forecasts i can't get over how beautiful this Monroe is okay I am going to put you together with your other sisters and brothers I'll just put you on the edge <laughs> I like to live precariously ain't I look at that beautiful I am demolishing this baklava it is so nice the stickiness on the end but this this uh, specific one <laughs> This is not as sweet as the other ones that I've had before, but in a week's time, my son's coming from Sydney and he's bringing me a special one. It's like a small baklava for $8.50 a slice. Oh my goodness. Maybe it's got gold in it as well, or uh, I don't know why, it's just so nice. I was gonna leave half, but I couldn't. Mm. I think I'll come back later on really. Mm. So nice. Mm.